Thank you for tuning in to Inside Taiwan. I'm Melvin Tan. The Central Election Commission held its numerical ballot designation join for the legislative election on the 21st. Eleven political parties are filled in candidates in the election. The DPP drew number three, while the KMT drew number five. The 34 at-large seats will be awarded based on the percentage of votes won to parties that win at least 5% of total votes. On the 21st, the Central Election Commission held the 8th Legislative Election Numerical Ballot Designation Drawing. The KMT was represented by Legislative Yuan President Wang Jingping, while the DPP was represented by its first at-large legislator candidate Chen Jieru. Taiwan National Congress drew number one, followed by the People Party with number two, the DPP with number three, the TSU with number four, the KMT with number five, the New Party with number six, the Free National Health Insurance Liaison with number 7, the Green Party with number 8, the PFP with number 9, the Republic of China Basic Laws of Taiwan Liaison with number 10, and the Taiwanism Party with number 11. The CEC also unveiled a sample ballot for the upcoming election. During the drawing, Taiwan National Congress Representative Chen Jiajun launched a vociferous protest over party votes, saying that a political debate was needed and was asked by CEC Chair Zhang Boya to leave the venue. The CEC will be launching public service campaigns to educate the public on the voting process between now and January 14th. As we just told you, candidates in the legislative election of Taipei City drew numbers for the numerical designations on the ballot on December 21st. Former Premier Frank Xie led seven DPP candidates to campaign together and said auspicious words according to the numbers drawn, hoping that the seven candidates can all get elected. The KMT is having eight candidates in this election. Coincidentally, Jiang Lai-Xing in the sixth constituency of Taipei City drew number eight, saying that they hoped all the eight candidates of the KMT would win just like the eight immortals. His opponent, George Child of the DPP, drew number seven and used the Chinese set phrase which literally translated as seven up, eight down, as a psychological tactic to bring bad luck to the KMT candidate. At nine o'clock in the morning, legislator candidates of Taipei City drew their numerical designation on the ballot. Former Premier Frank Xie led seven DPP candidates to campaign together and sang spontaneously according to the numbers drawn. The KMT has eight candidates in the election. There are nine candidates in the sixth constituency, Da'an and Wenshan district. Jiang Naixing of the KMT drew number eight and said that all of the eight candidates would win. George Zhao of the DPP picked number seven and used a Chinese set phrase, seven up, eight down, to wish bad luck to his opponent. Green Party candidate Pan Hanshen dressed up as a tree man to draw the number, as he wants to raise the awareness of environmental protection issues. In the eight constituencies of Taipei City, all of the 43 candidates have completed the drawing process and every one of them hopes the number could bring the election victory they've long waited for. The drawing for the numerical designations on the ballot for the upcoming legislative election for Tai Jones candidates took place in the city on the morning of 21st of December, and all the candidates experienced it in their own way. Huang Yijiao and Lin Jialong are battling it out in the 6th electoral district, while Zhang Yijiang, Chiao Shu Zhen, and Guo Jinming will vie for the 8th electoral district. It appears that the legislative battle between the parties is quite even in Taichung. On the morning of December 21st, Taichung's candidates for the legislative election drew their numerical ballot designations and all sought to make an impression during the drawing. Independent candidate Yan Qingbiao, who is running in the 2nd Electoral District, brought along some cartoon figures to cheer him on. The KMT's Yang Chongying, who is running in the 3rd Electoral District, dressed up as Santa Claus. Her opponent is the DPP's Tong Rui Yang. The elections in Taichung will be closely contested, with many believing the KMT and DPP will split the seats 50-50. In the 4th Electoral District, the heavily populated Xitun District, the incumbent Cai Jinglong is matched up against the DPP's Zhang Liao Wanjin, and the battle looks to be a tight race. The 6th Electoral District, located in southeast Taichung, is facing the same situation. Voters would choose between the KMT's Huang Yijiao and the DPP's Lin Jialong. Neither is willing to underestimate their opponent. 
In the 8th Electoral District, Fengyuan and Shigang, it is an evenly contested through a battle between the KMT's Johnny Chang, the DPP's Guo Junming, and independent candidate Che Shujuan. Everyone agreed that the battle for Taichung was fierce. As a point of comparison, they pointed out that in the 7th legislative election, the Pan Green camp won only one seat in the by-election. Thus, Taichung's legislative election will make for interesting viewing, as no one is certain which way the city's voters will be swayed. Following a positive day of trading in the U.S. market, the government's announcement that the National Stabilization Fund will be utilized to prop up the local bursts and a timetable being announced for the launch of a new measure that will allow Chinese banks to acquire stakes in Taiwan's banks. The Taiwan Stock Exchange jumped 236 points as soon as the trading opened on the 21st. The red figures on television screens were a welcome sight for sore eyes on the 21st. In the wake of a positive day of trading in the U.S. and the government's announcement that the National Stabilization Fund would be activated to help the struggling market, the Taiwan Stock Exchange jumped 236 points as soon as trading opened. Financial stocks led the charge, with 20 stocks reaching the maximum daily limit. Value-weighted, premium electronic and traditional manufacturing stocks also performed well, and the TSE reached nearly 7,000 points by noon. The market was bolstered by not only the NSF announcement, but also an implementation date of January 2nd being announced by the Financial Supervisory Commission for a new measure that will allow Chinese banks to acquire stakes in Taiwan's banks. According to analysts, whether turnover of at least 100 billion NT can be maintained will determine whether Taiwan's stock market can overcome the downturn. Therefore, investors should carefully monitor turnover trends. January 1, 2012 happens to fall on a Sunday. Labor workers are wondering if they can get an additional day off. The Council for Labor Affairs has been busy with answering phone inquiries in the past few days. And according to the Council, labor workers who have two days off, like civil servants, will not enjoy the compensatory leave, but those who have the weekend off every two weeks could get a four-day weekend. Many people will welcome the new year by watching the first sunrise of the new year. Usually, there was a three-day celebration weekend on January 1st, but this year, a lot of people only have two days off. Since January 1st next year falls on a Sunday, employers and employees are wondering whether this could make up for a compensatory leave. According to the Council for Labor Affairs, labor workers enjoy 19 days of national holidays in a year. However, if they usually have weekends off, they cannot enjoy the compensatory leave. For labor workers who have weekends off every two weeks, they are entitled to have 19 days of national holidays. January 1st and 2nd are national holidays, so they will enjoy the compensatory leave on January 3rd. This is estimated to affect 2.47 million labor workers in the country who can enjoy as many as four consecutive days off for the New Year holiday. Labor groups criticized the chaotic holiday policy and urged the government to quickly amend the law to implement the two-day weekend system and adopt a uniform holiday policy. Counties and cities around the island are advocating non-governmental workplaces without obstacles for the physically challenged. However, whether or not they are setting a good example, one civil group decided to find out, undertaking an inspection of 19 city and county government buildings to see if they were barrier-free. Yilan County took the top prize, followed by Taipei City and Taichung City. Taichung County ended up in last place. When the physically disabled go to government buildings to carry out their business, they are likely to run into physical obstacles that make it inconvenient for them to move around. One civil group decided to see how severe the situation was, undertaking an inspection of 19 city and county government buildings to see how barrier-free they were. They found many problems, such as outside passages whose slopes were too steep, in addition to slippery. Many exits included steps. The Construction and Planning Agency is in charge of making sure that government buildings are obstacle-free, and their ranking for this year had Taipei City, Taoyuan County, and New Taipei City occupying the top three spots. However, the civil group came up with different results. Their top three were Yilan County, Taipei City, and Taichung City. The group says that regardless of the result, all city and county governments should serve as examples for the population with barrier-free buildings. 
Only in this way can the practice spread across society. In addition, it will also facilitate the lives of the physically disabled.